When you go to these car auctions, sometimes you just don't know what you're gonna get. This 1995 Lincoln Town Car is a perfect example. The auction listing for this car said that it overheated, so I knew that going into it. But taking a test drive of the car while at the auction lot, I later discovered the air conditioning. It cycles on and off. It wasn't until getting the car home and spending some time with it that I later discovered that the radiator is leaking and that the turn signals and the hazard lights don't work either. But that's okay. Let me show you what I've been up to over the past two weeks with this car to get the thing sorted out. Wow, at the auction lot, looking over this car during the inspection period, I noticed that the engine fan wasn't spinning. Obviously, that's the root cause of the overheating problem, but I didn't know why it wasn't coming on. Also, and I didn't recognize it at the time, but the engine was really quiet, even with the air conditioning on. And obviously, the AC fan wasn't coming on either. But the question was why? What was the problem and why was that happening? Not knowing exactly what I was gonna need, first thing I did was I just ordered a new AC fan, a new clutch, and a water pump. And once those parts arrived, the first thing I did is pulled out the two bolts that hold the AC fan in place and started pulling it up. And as I removed that fan, I found that that AC fan was jammed up against the engine cooling fan. Once I got it unjammed, I pulled the AC fan all the way out and I was surprised how long the wiring harness was until I actually put the fan onto the ground and I realized the fan was never hooked up, never connected. So I opened up the power distribution block, looked for the AC fan port, saw that the fuse was blown. I pulled a spare fuse off the underside of the power distribution box cover, plugged it in, and it worked. I saw that the AC fan shroud, it was jammed up against the engine fan, keeping the engine fan from spinning. I don't know if that was the reason why the AC fan overheated and blew the fuse though. So clearly the AC fan was either misaligned or maybe out of place and the whole cooling system was jammed up because there was no fans working. And what I deducted was that this is an aftermarket AC fan. It doesn't fit quite right, it's just a little off. It just needed a smidge trimming on the bottom side of the fan shroud. And so now with the shroud trimmed up just a little bit, I got it reinstalled. Everything is lined up perfectly. The cooling fan and the engine fan no longer interfere. Everything spins perfectly. And now the car no longer overheats. In fact, after getting the fan installed, I let the car idle for 30 minutes with the air conditioning on and the temp gauge stayed on the M of normal the entire time without budging. So that repair didn't cost a dime. And next was the air conditioning to figure out why it was cycling on and off. And now with the AC fan working properly, the air conditioning, beautiful, ice cold air coming out of here consistently every time and within minutes you're frozen out of this cabin so with the engine no longer overheating and the ac blowing ice cold i was giggly i was thrilled i was tiptoeing around happy with my progress while the engine was idling though for those 30 minutes i saw some dripping coming out of the radiator i found this itty bitty little hole perfectly in line with the mounting bolt for the AC cooling fan. My assumption is the original AC fan went bad. Somebody installed this aftermarket replacement, used the wrong bolt. And while reinstalling, punctured right through and into the radiator. I figured I'd take a chance. I ran to the hardware store. I found some epoxy putty that's rated to 500 degrees, 100 degrees higher than the melting point of the plastic of the radiator. Needed that up, worked it into the hole, and it's been holding. It's been bone dry. In fact, I've driven the car about 300 miles now since making that repair and it's been working. I figured I'll just keep an eye on it and if it starts weeping or seeping, I'll just replace the radiator. Rock Auto has new radiators for $125 or so and it's probably money well spent, but I'm just gonna roll with it for the time being and see how it works. And then the final bugger with this car was the turn signal not working. I ended up undoing the two screws down here. There's a third screw on the other side, pulling this cover off, unhooking the turn signal switch. And while I was fiddling getting that switch off of the wiring harness, my forearm pressed down on the hazard switch and the turn signals came on. I mean, I didn't do anything, nothing I cleaned, nothing I did. I, all I did was fiddle with the wiring and it started working again. And so now with everything working on the car, ran it through inspection, got my license plate and I'm legal. Let's go for a drive. This is a beautiful car. This is what real luxury is about. This car speaks to me. This is before people were convinced that luxury was infotainment and multiple screens and stiff seats and sports suspension. This car, uh, just the seats, just like, oh, you just wanna soak into them and kick back and read a magazine, take a nap. 
the handling is is decent. It's decent handling. It really is, considering how soft the suspension is. This thing floats over the bumps. One of the things I remember when these cars were new was watching these things take road bumps and potholes and just seeing the suspension bounce all over the place and the body stay flat and smooth. This car is exactly that. You know, it's easy to forget that this is what a luxury car used to be. And I wish it came back. Higher profile tires, smooth ride, quietness. That to me is luxury. This car, when it was new, it was $38,000. I put that into an inflation calculator uh, for today's money and it equates to 67 grand, outrageous. The major competition for this car was the Cadillac Fleetwood. Now, the Fleetwood sold 16,000 units in 1995. The town car, 92,000 of these cars built. And that was a drop off from the year prior where 120,000 were made. This town car has become my most favorite auction buy ever. I love driving this car. I don't know if it's the ride, if it's the quietness, if it's the lack of driver aids. Maybe I'm just being hypnotized by that super awesome Lincoln hood ornament out there that looks like a piece of jewel floating out in the air. I love this car. And I was so anxious once I got this thing fixed up to take it for a road trip. I took my two youngest kids, we went down to the beach. It was a 75 mile drive. I was looking forward to every moment of that drive and this thing delivered. It was super smooth. It was ate up the miles like it was nothing. This thing just floated down the highway. It didn't matter if you're going 55 or 75. It all felt and sounded the same. This car is a delight to drive and I'm so thrilled that it's put back together and it's back on the road again. Now, this car is gorgeous. It really is. The original owner donated this to the Dementia Society in New Jersey. The Dementia Society auctioned it off. I bought it from Capital Auto Auction. I paid three grand for this car, another $424 in these outrageous fees that Capital charges. They even have a payment fee if you just decide to pay with a credit card, a 3% fee for that. Uh, but there are some flaws in this car. The front top of the bumper is a little faded. The, the clear coat seems to be worn out on that. The same with the rear bumper. There's some micro scratches on the trunk that uh, really are minor, but uh, you know, a good buffing and polishing will take that right out. And plus I need to put a, a top coat protectant on this car anyway. The header panel right at the hood ornament has a crack in it. We're radio, it doesn't turn off. I could turn it down, it won't turn off. It's stuck on continuously. And then it's the hood that seems to be out of adjustment a little bit. It's sitting a little high where it vibrates just a little on the sides. I just need to bring it down a little bit and get it closer to the bumpers and the fender. It's all minor, it really is. I'm splitting hairs here with all the issues with this car. Now there's a few things that I have done since uh, getting it back on the road. Uh, new tires. You know, finding white walls for this car in this size is kind of challenging. It's a 215, 70, 15. Not a lot of options out there. I just went with the Uniroyal Tiger Paws. I'm figuring whoever buys this car after me, they're probably going to yank those wheels and tires off anyway. The car had some dings on the side. I took it to a paintless dent repair guy. He popped out two of the dings. A third he couldn't get to. It was behind one of the support structures in the fender. Uh, what he was able to do was lessen the amount of the ding but he couldn't get rid of it entirely. And then it was just a, a good cleaning, vacuuming, wiping the seats down, putting conditioner on the seats. Um, and you know, there's still more to do, but this thing, I mean, it's stunning how nice this thing has been cared for. I can't say enough about how much I enjoy this car. The driving experience, it's beautiful, it's old school, cool, luxury, and I look forward to driving this thing every chance I get. Anytime I need to go somewhere, this is what I'm taking, and I love it. I can't say it enough. Uh, I hope you love it too. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, on another note, also, I upgraded my video. Instead of using my phone for all my video work, I upgraded to a, a GoPro, so if you see a difference, if you notice the difference, if you like it or don't like it, or even if you don't care, just let me know. Let me know what you think. If I should keep using the GoPro, go back to the phone, I'll leave it up to you. But otherwise, I am done here. I love this car. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time.